Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. My name is Doug Griffin, Franklin resident, 94FM The Fish Afternoon host, and proud Franklin Fire Department Citizens Fire Academy alumnus, honored to be your host for today's ceremony. If you're not already, if you would please, at this time, stand for our honor guard. We'll begin with an invocation provided by Pastor Chris Whitney of the Franklin nonprofit One Generation Away. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Franklin Fire Station 7. We thank you for the men and women that, that will occupy this building. We thank you for the EMS that's here. We pray for your protection over this facility, over every vehicle, Father. God, we thank you for protection over men and the men and women that serve here, the men and women that serve throughout Franklin. Father, the ones that run into a building or run into a situation when most of us are running the other way. God, we pray that your hand would be upon them. We pray you would be with their families, that they would be in continued peace. And God, we're grateful that we live in an amazing nation that your hand covers, and we are so grateful for that, Father. So today, we give all the praise, honor, and glory to you, our King, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. If you would please remain standing for our national anthem, which will be performed by siblings Arden and Ariel Weaver. Can you see by the tongue's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Still there. Oh, say, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Brave. 
You may be seated. At this time, please welcome City of Franklin Mayor, Dr. Ken Moore. Thank you, thank you. And does Franklin not know how to do it right? Look around this station today and you think back to a tragedy that occurred on I-65 and the fact that we established the station here and our team has been in less than optimum conditions for a while and now be able to move into a facility like this that's truly state of the art. So I applaud each and every one that's had a hand in this and hope you'll join me in applauding them immediately. And some of the folks that made this possible that I'm speaking of are our Board of Mayor and Alderman. I have seen several of them here today. I saw Alderman Blanton, Alderman Peterson, and Alderman Schroer. And is there anybody that I missed? I don't want to omit any of our elected officials here in the city. You know, this reflects a number of things, not only a great protection for our citizens and our city, but also a partnership that developed between the city and the county as we built this joint facility. And so we appreciate that partnership and the opportunity to continue to work with the county to provide services for everyone in Williamson County on a partnership basis and also our city. And this also represents the opportunity to protect our citizens with the top-notch public safety with low response times and response to medical emergencies and fires to save lives and protect uh, property here in our city. So I'm extremely proud to have been leading the Board of Mayor and Alderman during this period of time and I'll now turn it over to Mr. Eric Stuckey, our City Administrator, to make some comments. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'll, I'll touch on just a few things. Uh, Mayor talked a little bit about it, but originally this station was planned to be built on the west side of I-65 in the rural plains neighborhood that's part of Berry Farms. And a tragic accident happened in August of 2014. A tanker hit the, the, the bridge that was under construction, and we had a bridge down. Now, miraculously, the Tennessee Department of Transportation had a bridge back up within just a few months. The former commissioners in the audience, John Schroer, and that was great, but it taught us something. It taught us that we needed resources in a different location. And so we started to think, and this partnership with the county surfaced really that very day. We started to put firefighters and fire apparatus in the Ag Center. Then after that, shortly after that, we built a temporary station where we had a double wide that our crews lived in and a pole barn where we put the apparatus. And those folks lived in that setting for about six years serving the community as we decided and got this structure built. And that again was a partnership with the county to provide this land so that we could build this here and then ultimately co-locate uh, the county EMS uh, crews here as well. So it's a great partnership that grew out of a tragic circumstance and also showed how we adapt and learn and get better and put the best foot forward in terms of our service to the community. And part of how that is realized is what the insurance services offices rates fire departments. And the city of Franklin has an ISO rating of number one. Now that's great, but let me give you a little context. That is in the top 0.5% of fire departments across this country. So let's give the men and women of the Franklin Fire Department a hand. So not only do they provide that high level of fire protection, but there's also uh, emergency medical services at a very high level. We have advanced life support services coming from every one of our eight fire stations. And in this fire station, we also have the co-location with county paramedics and the emergency medical services there. So I'll step away here, but I do want to offer a couple brief words of personal thanks 
first to the fire department themselves and their adaptability to work through this change and to be in those temporary settings for over six years. I want to thank every firefighter who took that on and served in that way. We know that's above and beyond a little different than what you may have originally signed up for. I want to thank Brad Wilson, our project manager and facilities uh, manager that you'll hear from later. Brad did a great job spearheading this. Of course, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen who voted and put their money where their mouth is to build a $6.6 .6 million fire station with a co-location of, of emergency medical services. So I want to thank them. And most of all, I want to thank a community that cares deeply for those who serve them, especially in the public safety realm. And our, that includes our firefighters, our police, but everybody who serves the city. We appreciate the support that you give us every day. Thank you. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Franklin Fire Chief Glenn Johnson. Well, this is absolutely amazing. I love seeing all the young kids out here ready to wash this fire truck, parents supporting them to put this station in service. But as, previous, as previously said, I also cannot say enough for the partnership between the city and the county and partnering together to create the first fire station with the EMS unit included. We've all, always enjoyed a strong relationship with our EMS partners to get us through difficult times. But probably one of the most difficult times was the times that we just endured going through COVID-19. And we appreciate all the support that we gave each other and our personnel working together. I would like to talk briefly about the road that you came in on. This road was named in honor of retired Assistant Fire Chief John Fitzgerald. Chief Fitzgerald was hired in 1972 and was the first African American firefighter for the city of Franklin. He left us in 2006 when he retired with his wife Bernice as a battalion chief for the city of Franklin. Today, naming this road after Chief Fitzgerald shows the impact that he had not only on the community, the city, but also the fire department. And I can tell you, I stand here proudly today, I was mentored under Chief Fitzgerald. He left an impact on all of us. As a young lieutenant, he gave me the tools and the mentorship necessary to be here where I am today, and I can't thank him enough. Chief Fitzgerald is here with us today to do the uncoupling of the hose. Most uh, new businesses open up with a cutting of the ribbon, but in the fire service we do an uncoupling. Chief Fitzgerald will be joining us for that. There's other members of the Fitzgerald family that are here with us today. The Fitzgeralds have a long history of being public service in the city of Franklin. Chief Fitzgerald's uh, brother, Bolin, retired as a lieutenant from the Franklin Police Department. Charles, who's hit with us here today, retired as a sergeant with the police department. Chief Fitzgerald had two sisters, Miss Virginia and Miss Mary Curl who served as school crossing guards. And also here with us today is Robert Fitzgerald. He was also a member of the Franklin Fire Department and retired. I had the chief, or, uh, engineer Fitzgerald was my first driver. He was the first, one of the first faces I saw when I came to work here in 1994. The Fitzgeralds have always been good to me and they've always taught us what it means to be a firefighter here in Franklin and serve with a with a servant's heart. So with that, I would like to ask uh, Chief Fitzgerald and the Fitzgerald family come forward to help us with the hose and company.
All right. So retired Assistant Chief John Fitzgerald, I think we're going to give you the microphone for a few words, and then we're going to do our hose uncoupling after a few more speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would, a round of applause for retired Assistant Fire Chief John Fitzgerald. You know, this is such a great day for me, a great day for the city of Franklin and for the fire department. I had no idea back in 72 that I would be pursuing this career. I had no idea that I would have such an impact on the city of Franklin and the friends and fellow firefighters that I work with. But it almost brings tears to my eyes some 30 some odd years later that I still see some of them around and some of them is just so loving and giving and heartwarming to see and it's such a blessing just to be here uh, my wife and my family being here they've always supported me uh, my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law and all my nephews and all and my pastor is here I'm so glad to see him he's such a wonderful inspiration to me and it's just a wonderful day for me, a great day. I just want to say too that it's been such a blessing and it's just been overwhelming to me to have such honor to me and that I serve. Uh, the impact that I made on the city is just so overwhelming. And I just can't thank you all enough for being there for me as well as I was there for you. This is a great city, and it will continue to be a great city. And I just can't say enough about how much I love and brotherhood that I have and have had and still have for you all. And I think about you all each and every day. You all taught me so much. And so you give, when you know that you give all of yourself and give everything you got, and at the end of the day, you know that you've done the best that you could with God's blessings and God's help and God's direction, then you know you've done your, your best. And so it's just wonderful to see all of you here. And I just couldn't be more thankful and grateful for all of y'all. I just want to take you back just a little bit of history uh, from where I came from until now for as being employed with the fire department. When I started the fire department, it was only about nine firefighters, which me being the ninth firefighter and relief guy, a little building up on 604 West Main Street. We only had two fire trucks and one tanker. That was back in the day where they had the city hall, uh, water, water wheel office, a court, and every police, everything was there together. And oh my God, look how far we've grown to. And when I left, there was about five fire stations. I think I left right before station six would begin to be built. Now we have eight stations. And I want to tell you something. This is from the bottom of my heart. I have never seen a, a, and been in, just work with such great, talented personnel and people in my life as these guys. They are talented. And you know what? They are reason, there's a reason that they have a number one rating, because they are the best. And the, the, the administration staff and all those guys that I work with, they're doing such a great job. The personnel department, all the people who have a hand in making everything pops, the mayor, the city administrator. And I'm just so thankful to be here and thankful for this gratitude and this honor. And I love each and every one of you. And may God continue to bless and keep each and every one of you. Keep God in your life and you can't go wrong. Thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you would please welcome to the microphone, Williamson County Mayor Rogers Anderson. Well, thank you, Chief. I, I really hate following you, I can tell you. Um, if you don't believe that the Public Safety Department, city or county, is not a family, just look around. Children, young people, adults, there's so many people to thank. 
So many people that appreciate what public safety means through all Williamson County. I am very blessed to be the mayor of Williamson County, but I am more thankful to be able to work with the alderman and the mayor and the city manager and most of you that I know in the audience for what has accomplished over the last several months. The county's portion of this needs to be thanked to those county commissioners that voted for it. But even more so today through Williamson Medical Center and their efforts. Many of you may not realize, but something has happened in the last two weeks with Williamson Medical Center that now you stand a greater chance of living if the ambulance has to come to your house or your home or your business. Williamson Medical Center went through a two-year trial that was certified and board certified and rechecked so that if you need some kind of blood, blood activity, you now have that capability. Williamson Medical Center and that unit are part of our community that now is the one and only one in the state of Tennessee. That bar continues to be risen to, for our citizens and everyone around. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. It is an honor to always stand before the men and women to serve our community in a true public fashion. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Williamson Medical Center EMS Director, Alan Lovett. Talk about a lot of tough acts to follow, wow. What a great day to be here in Franklin, Williamson County, Tennessee at the grand opening celebration of this milestone in our relationships. I don't have a lot to add and I've been told by numerous people to keep it short, so I will. But I could not pass the opportunity to come up here and, and uh, honor my friend and uh, mentor, John Fitzgerald. Had the privilege of working with John when both of us were rookie status in our individual departments and we had parallel paths in our careers and during the first two years or so of my position in director, he served as the acting fire chief for the city of Franklin and we've always worked together. It's always been teamwork. It didn't matter whether it was county or hospital, government or city. Uh, got that a little mixed up, but forgive me. It was, we were there working together to serve our communities. And there's not many of us fellow natives of Franklin that are left on the streets. Uh, as the mayor alluded, he, he kind of uh, stole the thunder on the blood project. That was, that's pretty exciting, but uh, we've always been a system of relationships and partnerships in Williamson County. <clears throat> Excuse me, John, you started Franklin Fire in 1972. That coincides with the year that the Williamson County government established Williamson County EMS. So we got a birthday together, okay? Always going forward. Um, we were one of the first to provide pre-hospital advanced life support, one of the first to pilot and implement a first responder program extending not only the ambulance extending beyond the emergency room, but fire service delivering beyond the ambulance. And one of the first to implement priority dispatch where that was extended further into the dispatch center. And whether you dial 911 from the time that the call is taken and instructions are given, or the fire or ambulance respond, or the delivery to definitive care, it is all part of one system. And I'm grateful for the privilege and honor of serving this community. Thank you. And now, if you would please, welcome City of Franklin Facilities Project Manager, Brad Wilson. I probably have a heckler over there. And for Mayor Anderson, spoke to me before, we, before I came on or before he came up, he said, please don't talk long, but I am rather long-winded. I want to thank all the neighbors for coming out, all the local people, all these kids that are walking around that are future firefighters, little girls and little guys that have been crawling around on these trucks out here. It's great to see everybody. A few people to thank. 
Renaissance Group was the architect on this facility as it was at the West Haven facility, Station 7. This is our second prototypical unit, first with an EMS wing. Mike Terry with Renaissance Groups is here. He's our lead architect. Ronald Collin is not here. I tease him because I think he always goes to Disney World, which I, I think he just came back from. I want to thank uh, Rogers, Todd Horton, as I call him Chief, because he was with Franklin for a while. Alan Levitt, uh, my uh, friend Kevin Benson with the county, who's facilities manager as well. Um, the board, the mayor, Eric especially, Mayor Moore. Uh, Chief Johnson, Chief Baltimore, thank you all very much for your help and assistance with this facility. Um, this is a lead building. It's uh, environment, it's gone through a lot of environmental testing. Uh, one of the things that this hall has that we have at the West Haven is we have a treatment room over here to the side that we've been able to save lives at the facility at West Haven, heart attack victims, injuries, stuff like that. So this has been a very worthwhile little space. Not only do we have Engine 7 and the company here, we also now have Air 4, which is our air unit that goes out with all the calls. And that's one reason for this elevator to kind of help take up material to their area upstairs. We also have tornado rooms. We have a tornado room for the uh, men here and ladies of Station 7. And then our EMS wing on the other side also has a tornado room. We went through a lot of things building this facility. We went through COVID. We went through construction delays due to COVID. We moved a mountain and made a mountain of dirt. So we've been, we've been through the whole gamut with this job. So I want to thank the city for letting me do this, and I appreciate everybody coming out. Thank you. Well now, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the part that involves all of you. This is the hose uncoupling. So I'm going to ask the Chief Fitzgerald and his family and those that spoke will come. And our city officials, all those that spoke previously. Ladies and gentlemen, once we're ready for the official uncoupling to begin, I'm going to ask all of you to begin a countdown. Of course, this is Station 7, so we're going to count from 7 down to 1, and we'll get this fire station officially up and open. Once everybody's in place, I'm going to need everybody. Kiddos, this is what you came for, a chance to count it down. Everybody's in place. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, from seven on down, let's go. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey, hey. <laughs> well, it's official now, ladies and gentlemen. Station seven is open.